Have you ever looked closely at a glowing incandescent bulb and thought, wait a second, how does that tiny wire inside glow so brightly without melting into a puddle? That thin metal thread in there? It's made of tungsten. And even though it heats up to over 2000 degrees Celsius, it somehow manages to hang in there without giving up. That's not magic, it's material science. So today, we're diving into the glowing world of light bulbs and answering a surprisingly complex question. What makes tungsten filaments glow without melting? Let's get into it right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start by zooming in on what's actually going on inside an incandescent light bulb. Inside that glass bulb, there's a vacuum or sometimes a gas like argon or nitrogen. In the center is a coiled filament, usually made of tungsten, suspended between two electrical contact wires. When you flip the switch, electricity flows through the filament, encountering resistance. This resistance causes the tungsten to heat up, like seriously heat up. We're talking temperatures as high as 2,700 to 3,000 degrees Celsius, hotter than lava. At that insane temperature, the tungsten filament begins to emit visible light, a phenomenon known as incandescence. That glow you see, it's basically the filament screaming from the heat, but it doesn't melt. And that's where things get interesting. So why tungsten? Out of all the metals we could use to make a filament, what makes this one the chosen champion? Well, for starters, tungsten has the highest melting point of any pure metal, a whopping 3,422 degrees Celsius. That's higher than any temperature it reaches in a typical light bulb. That alone makes it a fantastic candidate for getting hot and staying solid. But it's not just about the melting point. Tungsten also has a low vapor pressure at high temperatures, which means it doesn't easily evaporate. If it did, you'd have bits of metal condensing on the inside of your bulb every time you turned on the light. Over time, of course, some of the tungsten still evaporates, leading to that dark and smoky look in old bulbs, but it happens slowly. Another important trait is tungsten's high tensile strength. Even when it's red hot, tungsten resists sagging or breaking. That's crucial because the filament is often coiled into a spring shape to increase its surface area and efficiency. Imagine a saggy or floppy filament. It just wouldn't work well. Now let's talk about why the filament even heats up in the first place. It all comes down to electrical resistance. When electricity flows through a material, it encounters resistance, basically friction at the atomic level. This friction causes the atoms to jiggle, which generates heat. Tungsten has a relatively high electrical resistance compared to metals like copper or silver. Normally, high resistance is a bad thing in wiring. You want wires to carry electricity efficiently. But in a filament, that resistance is the whole point. It's what causes the filament to heat up and glow. The trick is finding a material that resists just enough to glow, but not so much that it breaks down. Tungsten hits that sweet spot beautifully. And because it doesn't melt until long after it's begun emitting visible light, it allows for a stable and long-lasting glow. At this point, you might be thinking, but if it's getting that hot, isn't it right on the edge of melting? And yes, it kind of is. Tungsten operates at extremely high temperatures, but just under its melting point. That's where material engineering comes into play. Engineers design the filament to stay within a safe thermal range. It's not just one straight wire. It's usually a coiled coil, meaning the wire is coiled into a spring and that spring is coiled again. 
This design helps control the distribution of heat and light. It allows the filament to get very hot in a compact space without requiring massive amounts of energy. Also, the vacuum or inert gas inside the bulb helps prevent the tungsten from oxidizing. If oxygen were present, the tungsten would react violently and disintegrate in seconds. By removing oxygen, we let the filament heat up in peace without any combustion. Even though tungsten is tough, it's not invincible. Over time, the metal does evaporate atom by atom, and the filament gets thinner in spots. Eventually, it forms a weak point that breaks, which is what causes a bulb to burn out. It's a slow and inevitable process, accelerated each time the bulb is turned on and off, creating stress from thermal expansion. To help counter this, some bulbs use a gas like halogen, which creates a regenerative cycle where evaporated tungsten gets redeposited onto the filament. That's how halogen bulbs last longer than traditional ones. They recycle themselves in a way. Still, no filament lasts forever. It's a beautiful, brief life, glowing hot, staying solid, and ultimately fizzling out after hours of service. You might be wondering, if tungsten filaments are so tough, why don't we use them much anymore? Well, it comes down to efficiency. Only about 5 to 10% of the electrical energy that goes into an incandescent bulb turns into visible light. The rest is wasted as heat. That's like heating up your room just to read a book. Modern lighting like LEDs and CFLs are way more energy efficient and longer lasting. They don't rely on heating a metal until it glows. Instead, they use semiconductors or gas reactions to produce light without nearly as much heat. That's why they've become the new standard. Still, there's something almost poetic about the old filament bulb. That soft, warm glow is the result of a controlled dance between heat and metal, a metal that refuses to melt, even as it lights up our world. So the next time you pass by an old lamp or see an Edison-style bulb glowing in a cozy cafe, think about the material miracle inside it. That little coil of tungsten is the product of decades of experimentation and deep understanding of how metals behave under extreme conditions. It glows brightly not because it's indestructible, but because it's perfectly suited to walk the line between brilliance and breakdown. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.